Hi everybody, my name is Alex Botero. I'm a building engineer and I've been an instructor with the Local One Training Center for the last 10 years. Today we're located inside the main pump room of a high-rise building. This is a modern building that opened up in 2019. It's 70 stories high and it has over 300 apartments. So a lot of the equipment that we're going to see down here is a little bit modern. I do want to go over some of the items that we'll discuss. We have the main water intake lines. We're going to talk about the booster pump operation. We'll also touch base on fire protection systems. We'll talk about the OSMY valve and tamper switches. And finally, we'll just go over some basic maintenance. Let's walk over to the main water intake lines. As you can see, there's a lot of equipment here. But over in this location, this is where you'll find the main intake lines. Every high-rise building will have two intake lines. That is redundancy. In case the city shuts one down to do some repairs or to provide service to a new property, your service will not be interrupted. Over on the back is where the lines are coming in. Right here in this location, the main water line merges into two separate sections. Everything to the left of me is for fire protection. Everything to the right goes to their main water, their domestic water. One thing I want to note, the minute everything goes into fire protection, you'll go through what is called a backflow preventer. That means that water in this side will never be able to come back and pollute your domestic water. All right, so let's talk about your domestic water lines. As the water comes in from the city, it's gonna start traveling through. You'll obviously have a couple of water meters, okay? That just tells you how much you're using. Because this is a newer building, I have an electronic meter this meter is connected to my building animation system and it can tell me from my computer exactly how many gallons uh, are being run. From here, the next step is your main booster pumps. Uh, every building, again, because of redundancy, they'll have two or more booster pumps. One pump is sufficient enough to maintain the whole building with water, but uh, two or more just in case one goes down, you always have a backup and your service is never compromised. As we come over, in this one we have four. Uh, the city pressure sends me about 45 PSI, and in order for me to reach to the height of the building, I need to increase that pressure. In this case, my top of the zone is on the 40th floor, so I'm boosting up the pressure to 220 PSI. Uh, technically, you're always looking to have about 40 pounds of pressure on the top of the zone to have comfortable pressure to be able to take a shower or utilize water in your apartment comfortably. Um, as I was telling you, one pump will always be running. They're set up on a lead lag operation. In this case, my pump number two is running, pump number three is my lag. It will only come on if it needs help. They're on a day-to-day -day operation, so tomorrow, pump number three will come on, becoming my lead, pump number four will become my lag. The reasons why you wanna alternate the pumps is two major things. One, you keep the pumps running at about the same amount of hours, and overall, he extends the life uh, that they have. Secondly, the worst thing you could do is have one pump off for a prolonged period of time. Because what will happen is, if you ever need that pump and it's been down for too, many, too, too long of a time, the pump will not come on or work properly when you turn it on. All right, next we're gonna talk about the fire protection system. Everything you see here is for my fire protection starting with uh, my control panels. So let's walk over this way and we'll take a look at the pumps. The fire protection system, covering red. I have two main pumps 
which is telling me I have two zones, a high zone and a low zone. All right, the pumps can work independently, but if the high zone is running, the low zone will always come on. In the fire protection system, you really don't do much. Uh, you'll have your yearly drain down and your biannually inspection of the pumps. The one thing all chief engineers are required to do is to run the pumps uh, every month. So I turn on my pumps from the controller. Uh, they're timed for 10 minutes, so every month I do a 10 minute test of the pumps. Another important thing is this little pumps. Each main pump will have a smaller pump. These are called your jacket pumps. These smaller pumps are meant to fill the system slowly. If you ever did your drain down or if you did a drain down to make a repair, you never want to utilize your huge pumps with a lot of GPM and power to fill the system back up. You utilize the jacket pumps to fill it up. Um, they will also maintain pressure in case you got the small leaks, they'll maintain that pressure within a few pounds. All right, next we're gonna talk about some valves, uh, especially the OS and Y valve. And we got some tamper switches as well. OS and Y stands for outside stem and yoke. And it's a valve that you'll find in a lot of tests like the City of Chicago Stationary Engineers exam, uh, for instance. Uh, all emergency personnel are trained to know OS and Y valves. What it means is when the stem is out, the valve is open. So if there was an emergency and there was uh, water coming out, anyone can shut it off. The stem will go all the way in and that will prevent water from going any further. Attached to major equipment and valves, we have tamper switches. This tamper switch, in case somebody accidentally shuts off the valve and forgets to turn it on, this will send an alarm to your fire panel, letting you know that the valve is closed. So here's another part of our fire protection system. This building also has a nitrogen generator for one of our dry systems. Uh, most buildings that have dry systems for their garages or for areas that can freeze during the winter, you typically have a compressor pumping air to the pipes, maintaining everything filled. Instead of air, uh, the newer technology now uses nitrogen generators. It works just the same as air, but it's a little bit better. It doesn't have moisture in the pipes, so it prolongs the, length, the life of the pipes. Um, the typical maintenance on this is just having it checked once a year, make sure your compressor's working fine, uh, drain your tank if you need to, and that's about it for this. Finally, we're going to talk about some basic maintenance in a room like this. There is a lot of equipment and a lot of electronics, so the number one thing is to keep it dust free as possible. It is a mechanical room, so there'll be a lot of dust. We come in here and once a week just to touch it up and clean it up. Uh, so that's the first thing. Secondly, something that not everybody does, but you should, every valve should be exercised at least twice a year. All the smaller valves to these larger valves. What I mean is you want to just close up the valve all the way and then open it back up. That you're exercising the valve. What happens is you're preventing sediment from building up. If you don't operate a valve for a long period of time, the minute you need it, it's not gonna work for you. And on your pumps, uh, especially your booster pumps or your bigger pumps like this, make sure you're keeping up with the grease or oil if needed. Uh, we typically have lock charts. We know how much grease to pump into them and we do them again every six months. If you like to learn more about this equipment and much more, I would recommend a few things. Uh, you can join the two-year apprenticeship program. After acquiring some experience, you can take the City of Chicago Stationary Engineers exam, and you can also take the Certified Residential Engineer program at the Training Center. Well, I want to thank you for your time today, and I'll see you at the Training Center.